there are some out there, but they seem to be very high up in the water, and we, we're towing along the bottom, so we're just not. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So why isn't there any squid or John Dory? No today? idea. If we do that, we know everything. <laughs> Martin needs to come up with a few good ideas to improve his catches quite quickly before his first full season starts to slip away. On the other side of the island, it's Rick the Vet's last day on Scilly. He's leaving because he's found a job on the mainland, which pays more than twice what he gets here. Still no sign of a replacement. As with all key worker jobs on the Sillies, there's an initial flurry of interest. Then applicants discover the high cost of living, the isolation, and the oddities of island life, and rapidly back off. At the moment, uh, there's no one coming over here. If there's an emergency, it's either go to Penzance, or, uh, or Truro, or do nothing. If it's, if it's foggy, if it's the middle of the night, if it's a Sunday, there's no veterinary service whatsoever. So what's going to happen? At the moment, I honestly don't know. And for you personally, this, you once described this to me as one of the most wonderful views on the world. How do you feel now saying goodbye to all this? It is one of the, one of the most beautiful places in the world, but it is not an easy place to live. With Rick's departure, the predicament of the island farmers, in fact of anyone who owns animals, is thrown into sharp focus. The government has sent a letter firmly turning down their plea for extra funding. Traditionally, most farms on Scilly produced flowers for the mainland. And next stop on Father Guy's tour is a flower farm on the other end of the island run by Penny Rogers. Most flower farms have gone under in recent years in the face of cheap imports flown into the UK from East Africa. And Penny doesn't know how long she and her husband can hang on. So these are the daffodil? So this, they're all, yeah, they're all Narcissus. Narcissus, yes. sorry. So with the help of a grant from the EU, Penny's gone into business with a friend and opened up a riding stables, which she hopes will be popular with holidaymakers. Hello, Charlotte. But without a vet, Penny's business too could go under. Getting someone over, even in an emergency, is simply unrealistic. That's going to be very weather dependent, especially in yes. the winter. Yeah. If it's foggy, you know, you have to have the, the animal ill at the right time or else you're going to have to wait Quick. or ship it over. But a horse, a sick horse mm. to be shipped over is going to be terribly difficult. It really doesn't bear thinking about if something does go wrong. It's going to be... So, um... The morning after the boozy quiz night, and Nikki appears to be suffering slightly. <laughs> I'm too hot now. <laughs> I can't bear it. <laughs> She's taking her parents out to the eastern approaches to visit some of the island's most famous and most regular visitors. There's one on that right there. of lard and they just swim so <coughs> gracefully in the water and they come up and they uh, they were nibbling the fins at the bottom if you sort of stand upright and they were sort of like just touching distance and they just swim around you it's really nice Nikki's parents know she's absolutely dedicated to her career and could go a long way in the force she's um, quite ambitious she's she? very ambitious yeah, yeah. she 
tries where everything is going. She <clears throat> does umpteen fitness tests with fire extinguishers strapped to her legs and carrying guns and all sorts of <laughs> She won't be... Once she's made up her mind to do something, she'll do it, and that's it. Um, she never backs out on anything. Rather than being chatted up by the local lads in the pub, Nikki started to spend her spare time studying for promotion. She's also visiting an old shooting range she's discovered up in the woods above the garrison. Last year I applied to do armed response and I missed out by one shot, so I got myself a little air pistol similar to the Glock which we use um, so that I could get a bit of practice in. Beneath that exterior lies a woman of steel. Yeah, a bit high, a uh, bit of a group there, and a couple in the middle for good measure. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, it's all right. Uh, want a bit of a tighter group, really. So I can only help practicing, really, and just aiming, although it hasn't got any recoil on. Like uh, the Glock that we use in the police, it's, uh, it's just aim, really, and this is probably one of the furthest distance we'd shoot in the police um, for practicing anyway, so hopefully practice makes perfect. Is there much need for a firearms unit in the city do you think? Uh, I don't think so, no, not yet, but, <laughs> which is nice in a way. <laughs> Where on earth do you get the gun from, Nicky? Right. Mum and Dad bought it for me for Christmas. For me, Mum and Dad, was it for yeah. Christmas? <laughs> An interesting Christmas present. Yeah. In the spirit of good world, yeah. like, all <laughs> Well, they asked me what I wanted. I said, get me a gun. <laughs> Nikki loves the sillies, but is her long-term future really here? Her bosses think she's made a great start, but the pull of home may just be too great. The season's starting to get into full swing. Each evening, the boats bring hundreds of visitors who've spent their day exploring the islands back to their hotels and B&Bs. Most of them are hungry, and competition to book the best places to eat is fierce. Each day, trawlerman Martin Bond tours the pubs, restaurants and hotels selling his fish. And his frustration is growing. What the chefs really want is fish he just can't provide. Yeah. Place? Uh, no, uh, place. Only red mullet, gurners. Might be a couple of gurners, perhaps. Squid. Yeah. So now Martin's made a decision. Despite his tight cash flow, he's going to gamble two and a half thousand pounds on a brand new net and tackle. Hopefully, it'll give us the chances of catching more fish like John Dory and squid, which are not always so tight to the bottom. And these are the fish you could sell well to the restaurant? Oh, yeah, we can never catch enough of it. Yes. Really? Oh, that's for sure, yeah. So how so is the net different to the one, the, the one you've got now? The one we've got now, the, the mouth opening is about six foot high, but the one we get in will be about 12 or 14 feet high. If they're not tight on the bottom, you're not going to catch them. If they're up a bit, right. you know, if they're a bit higher up, then you need to have a net that's with a high enough opening to, to, to get them in. So you're still investing money in, in this project? Oh, well, this game is all you do is, is put money in. It's like standing in a shower and tearing up five pound notes, really. <laughs> but you've obviously got faith in the future, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Well, I suppose so, yeah. You're just eternal optimist, aren't you? <laughs> what sort of tide is it? I mean, high it's, tide, yeah? Yeah, it's coming up towards high tide. Meanwhile, Father Guy's two days of meeting and greeting is at last coming to an end. His final call this evening is on the off-island of Briar. Population, 80 souls. Thank you, Fraser. Thank you very much. OK. Cheers. See you later. Marion. Hi, good to see you. Very good there. Very good person. Tomorrow, he'll be joined by his wife, Kate, and two daughters. And he'll need to decide how to tell his new parishioners something about himself that was only detected a few years ago. I discovered I was dyslexic which for me at that age was terribly liberating. Um, to suddenly discover I wasn't thick, but I just had this learning disability. So you had no idea for the first 35 years no. of your life or whatever that you were dyslexic? No. And I left school at 16 with just one O level, never really knowing what was wrong, basically coming out thinking I was thick and was in farming nearly 10 years as a general farm worker. 
and then I, I got a job in industry. Is it a struggle for you now doing your job? There are times when I do struggle. If someone gave me a side of A4 printed 12 font and say, read that quickly, I just can't do it. I need time alone how to do you take it with, in. How do you cope with the sermons then? Um, on the whole, sermons are OK because I, I will have written them and read them through several times at home. But if for whatever reason I become stressed, it does come out. Um, the folk in Malin will tell you. How, what happens then? I, I just go sort of blank and don't know where I am and can't pronounce words. Um, but you can't predict everything and sometimes I'm blown off the course. You, you must tell some people, presumably, the church wardens or... Yes, they'd know. And when do you tell them that? It's quite a tricky thing, isn't it? It is. Probably sooner rather than later. <laughs> so you haven't mentioned it to them yet? No, not yet. In the next programme, as violent storms and 90 mile an hour winds lash the islands, there's a frustrating wait for Martin the trawler man to see if his gamble of a new net will pay off. What do you think about it? Well, time will tell. <laughs> We're going to get it wet yet. As WPC Nikki Green ponders her future, her colleague PC Steve knows there are difficult decisions ahead. I think it's a very, very hard place to work as a single person. Yeah, I don't think I could do it. Um, you'd either end up an alcoholic or a mad, I think. <laughs> and Father Guy prepares to take his first service on the Sillies. But will his nerves get the better of him? Yeah, pretty apprehensive, really. Um, um, it's my first time here, and you want to do your best for the people, so, uh, yeah, a bit apprehensive. The newly appointed chaplain to the Isles of Scilly, Father Guy Scott, is making a flying visit to his new parish to meet the islanders and get a feel for their unusual way of life. He meets local fishermen who are struggling to keep alive the traditional way of earning a living. There's no, no squid turned up yet. And the same with the John Dory, very patchy. So if they don't appear, be a big hole in our bank account at the end of the year. But Father Guy has a secret which he fears could let him down in front of the islanders. I discovered I was dyslexic. And when do you tell them that? It's quite a tricky thing, isn't it? It is. Probably sooner rather than later. <laughs> so you haven't mentioned it to them yet? No, not yet. Thirty miles off the western tip of Cornwall, the Isles of Scilly are basking in a glorious midsummer heat wave. The water's so clear and stunningly blue, you could be on the equator. And the holiday season on which the island economy relies seems to have got off to a promising start. And now, after months of waiting, the country's remotest parish is soon to get a new chaplain. He's Father Guy Scott who will take over his post in a few months, but who's over here from his parish on the mainland for a brief whistle-stop tour. Right now, he's doing some vital research. Mark, good morning. Or is it afternoon? It's afternoon. afternoon this is Guy. Guy, this is Mark. And wow. very important man, look at it. Barrel. <laughs> One of the emergency services. Yeah. <laughs> 
How amazing. Father Guy loves his You're real ale Isla. and has been chomping at the bit to meet the island's brewer, Mark Pragar. So how long have you been doing this? Um, I, about five years I've, I've been brewing commercially here. Uh, but I've been brewing here since I was 13, so... You're making a living? Um, just about. It's true. Mark used to teach at the school here on the main island of St. Mary's, but gave it all up to start a new life brewing his own range of beers, which sell in the island's pubs. A bit of quality control I go in for every now and again. Oh, good for you. Well, okay. Never a wrong time to drink a real okay. ale. Cheers. Cheers. Good help. Thanks. There's some people in the village where I live would say proper job. <laughs> proper job. Lovely. Next, it's down to the harbour for a special concert with the island's choir, where Father Guy's guest of honour. Whilst he's here on his brief visit, Father Guy has agreed to take Sunday services. It'll be the first time since the announcement of his appointment that he's preached on the Sillies. And he'll start at the little church on the tiny island of Briar, a 20-minute boat trip to the north of St. Mary's. On an island like Briar, with only 80 people living on it, everyone's involved in church life. For example, every able-bodied woman on the island is on the flower arranging rotor, whether they like it or not. Today, it's the turn of Marion Bennett and her friend Caroline Pierce, who are busy preparing the church for Father Guy's first service on Sunday. Marion's family runs a local boatyard, and as well as being a counsellor, she has several holiday cottages. Marion knows better than anyone that settling into island life for Father Guy will be no easy task. He will be I'm not subjected to the visiting vicar test, but of course... What is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's really, um, I think, uh, we just gently assess the, the sermon and uh, the way the service is conducted. I think it's striking the balance between being involved and being distanced en enough to help people deal with their problems. There's a sort of sensitivity which are some people like the GPs, the priest, the police and so on have to maintain. I, I hesitate to use the word trapped, but sometimes you are. He'll be nervous, won't he? His debut. He will. For Father Guy, his first service will be particularly stressful. What he hasn't told them is that he suffers from dyslexia, which can throw him into a spin. He's worried that his nerves will get the better of him. The tradition of fishing is still very much part of Father Guy's new parish. In fact, recently, there have been signs of a revival in the industry. A new ice store has been built with an EU grant at the back of the quay, which has enabled trawlerman Martin Bond to try again to earn a living from the sea after a break of years. And he is catching fish. They're good, they're good money. Common and garden squid. <laughs> The trouble is that he just can't get enough of the valuable varieties like squid and John Dory that the chefs in the local pubs and restaurants are crying out for. That's the baby. That's where the money is. That's it. That there? That's the thumbprint of St. Peter, that is. So the French, they call him Saint Pierre. Really? Huh. The Italians call him the janitori, gatekeeper. That's where John Dory comes. Now Martin has taken delivery of a new piece of equipment which he hopes will change his fortunes. He's invested over £2,000 in a new net and tackle, which he thinks will dramatically increase the size and quality of his catches. So you've got the new net? Uh-huh. Is that that's it there? That's her. What do you think about it? Well, time will tell. Have you not tried it out? No. Oh. <laughs> we were going to, but uh, the weather's turning a bit scuffy, so... We'll wait for a bit better weather. So you pleased with it? Don't know, yeah. 
proof's in the pudding, isn't it? <laughs> so you might be able to get some of these squid and John Doerr in. Hopefully. It looks a business anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Martin's desperately hoping to hand over his boat, the Marauder, to his son Joel, so that he can have a secure long-term future on the islands. So much now hangs on the success of the new net. Back on the little off-island of Briar, where Father Guy will be taking his first service, it's changeover day for the holidaymakers. They come to enjoy the island's wild and lonely landscape and its tranquility. When she's not helping around the church, you'll almost certainly find Marion Bennett busy with her holiday houses. This is her home, where she can accommodate a few visitors, and around it she has three other small holiday cottages. Today, she's welcoming a couple from London. At this time of year, she's busy round the clock, seven days a week, cleaning the cottages and looking after her guests. Do come on up and have a cup of tea. Oh, thank you. Have you always lived here? No, I've lived here for 33 years. Married here, yes. But I've known Silly all my life. Another big attraction for visitors is that the Sillies are virtually crime-free, or at least have been until now. What's just happened to Marion has alarmed an old-fashioned community unused to the ways of the modern world. Well, for the past month, I, I've just been very busy and I um, only gave a cursory look every now and again at the internet bank accounts. And when I did so, I was horror-struck to find that um, I, there was a series of about 12 fraudulent payments had been made. On your business on account? Business current account, yes. How much money have you lost? Uh, two and a half thousand. Two and a half thousand pounds? Mm. On Briar and on Scilly in general, we tend to think of ourselves as quite protected from the wicked wide world of crime. We're not so savvy, perhaps. What and happens now? Well, I've, I've phoned the police and um, uh, Nikki there, policewoman, is going to come up and get the details wherever possible. At long last, a bit of real crime for young WPC Nikki Green to get her teeth into. She's not had much to do since joining the island force a few months ago. Now she tells Marion she'll get over to Briar as soon as she can. Father Guy has now been joined on the islands for a few days by his family from the mainland. His wife Kate and daughters Alice and Clary. And now, for the first time, they're about to visit what in a few months will become their new home. In fact, through a quirk of history, the five-bedroom chaplaincy is one of the biggest houses on Scilly. And now it's being given a facelift and thorough renovation before the new chaplain and his young family move in. Who's gonna, who's gonna knock on the door? Come on, Alice, you go and knock on the door. Workman painting? Hello. 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 The current residents are retired priests, Reverend Donald Marr and his wife Margaret, who've been holding the fort on the islands until Father Guy officially takes up his post. They've been keeping a low profile while Guy's been meeting the islanders. How are you? I'm OK, thank you. you. Are you having a good holiday? Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. He says, no. what holiday? Wow. What holiday? Wow. Now, all these bits of furniture you see at the moment, they will disappear and yours will come. So picture it with your kitchen in. Oh, you've got an arga. And an arga <laughs> that is now ticking away so there, lovely. working. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes, in an evening, Mum is going to float down in her ball gown for dinner. Donald has some useful advice on how Guy and Kate should choose their bedroom. It depends on how many years you're staying. If you're going to stay to our age, you'd be better in that one, because it's next door to the loo. 